be with you. Good evening and welcome to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. Our mission here is to tell the next generation of what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. We're glad you joined us in worship. If you would be sure to sign the attendance booklet in each row, that helps us to know who is here. Uh, we'd like to welcome all of you worshiping online with us today too. In this season of Pentecost, we focus especially on the Holy Spirit's work in and among his people. So let's sing a song about the Holy Spirit's work among us and ask him to be present here with his blessing, with his power. So let's sing hymn 913. <laughs>
Lord God, our gracious Father, we confess that we have not walked by your Spirit, instead of using our freedom to love our neighbors as ourselves. We have served our own selfish interests. We have chosen to live as our sinful flesh desires, instead of as your perfect law requires. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, by the mercy of your us in the death and resurrection of your Son. Fill us with the fruit of your Spirit, so that we who belong to Christ Jesus may walk in the way of love and worship. In his name we pray. Amen. The Spirit of God anointed Jesus to walk in perfect obedience to the Father's commands. His death upon the cross and resurrection from the grave prove that his grace alone gives us his presence, provision, and purpose to all who belong to him by faith. Therefore, in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. For he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name, and nourish us with all goodness, that we may love and serve our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's holy word. The first reading is from First Kings. Chapter 19. Behold, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore the mountains, and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak 
and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall appoint Haziel to be king over Syria. And Yehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall appoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Maalah, you shall appoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes the sword of Haziel shall Yehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Yehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shabbat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him. And he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him, and took the yoke of oxen, and sacrificed them, and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen, and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah, and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you <coughs> bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit 
is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with, his, with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise in honor of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to, to tell the fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. And they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. <clears throat> to another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. As God's people together, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living. number 688.
Church, and to all of you, wherever you are, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text today is our Old Testament reading from 1 Kings chapter 19, and our theme today is this, listen to the whisper. This last week, Pastor Devin and Chris Traster, our lay delegate, and I went to Ann Arbor, Michigan for the English District Convention. And at the convention, we listen to reports and we vote on resolutions, and that's important. But the best parts of the convention for me are the times we spend in worship together, the times we spend together as brothers and sisters in the family of God, getting to know each other, visiting with each other, celebrating what God is doing. And it's the time we, we spend hearing about God's work in mission, how the Holy Spirit is moving his church in mission. We got to meet in, uh, a pastor who just planted a church in Idaho. We heard a woman speak with great passion about not one but five churches that he, she helped her husband start in Pakistan. We heard from the synodical president about a pastor who is preaching the gospel and handing out helmets and flak jackets in Ukraine and about underground missionaries in Iran who are reporting, reporting exponential growth of the church there. And more, lots, lots more stories about the power of the gospel and the Holy Spirit's work in the church. And I always appreciate and value that reminder that the church is far, far bigger than just me so much bigger than just this congregation, far bigger than just a district of 160 plus churches or even the synod of 6,000 congregations, far bigger than the whole church on this continent, all over the world. God is working in mighty ways, even if it all seems so ordinary, word and water 
wafer and wine, clergy and laity, regular people spreading the news. It's a good reminder for me, I am not alone or powerless. But I must confess that sometimes I do feel alone or powerless or both. And I'm willing to wager that you have too. And doesn't that make you feel so vulnerable, unsure, uneasy, afraid? When's the last time you felt alone and powerless? Elijah, the great and mighty prophet of God, had just experienced an incredible victory. He had challenged 450 prophets of Baal to a contest. You pray to your God, and I'll pray to the true God, the God of Israel, Yahweh, and let's see who answers. Elijah even taunted them in their failure. Pray louder. Maybe your God is sleeping. Maybe he went on a trip. Maybe he's in the bathroom. Pray louder. But Baal did not answer. Yahweh did. And not only did fire come down from heaven to consume Elijah's sacrifice, but that fire also consumed the, the stones of the altar and also all the water. They had, they had doused the entire sacrifice and altar with water and it pulled around the sacrifice. All of it was burned up. And the wicked prophets of Baal were then destroyed. And that ended their evil idolatry that very day. But Elijah's confidence was short-lived. Wicked King Ahab went home and moaned about all this to his evil wife Jezebel, and she vowed to kill Elijah in 24 hours or less. And Elijah ran. He ran for his life. He ran feeling crushed and defeated. He ran away feeling alone and powerless. And he made it to Horeb, better known as Sinai, the mountain of God where Moses once stood. And he spent the night in a cave. And that sets up the events of our text. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. Notice how righteous Elijah makes himself sound as if God owes him something. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. See, there's the part where he feels alone. I'm the only one left. And they seek my life to take it. And there's the part where he feels powerless as if Ahab and Jezebel would be unstoppable. Well, here's God's response. Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. In other words, Elijah, come out of your cave of fear. I'm about to show up. And don't we wish God would show up for us? Our nation seems to be increasingly hostile to the church. And in some other nations, it's even worse, even violent. God's people often feel surrounded and under attack. Couldn't God just show up for us? Or think of the man in the sterile cave of the doctor's office who receives the bad report. He instantly feels afraid, alone, and powerless. Wouldn't it be great if God showed up in that moment and said, I'm here. Or think of the shy girl who's about to walk into a new school. She doesn't know anyone or even where to go. Wouldn't it be great if God showed up, even disguised, to walk with her? Or think of the mom 
who has to handle 95% of all the child care and dad only has the kids every once in a while for a fun weekend. She tries to handle the work, the bills, the house, the schedules, everything. Feeling overwhelmed, she feels alone and powerless. Wouldn't it be great if God said, hey, I'm about to show up. Or think of the young man who is the stellar athlete and the exceptional student and everyone seems to look up to him, but the pressure is making him crack. He can't even explain how he feels and doesn't know how or when it's going to erupt, but he's on the verge of it, alone and powerless. Wouldn't it be great if God said, hey, I'm here. What is it that makes you feel alone and powerless? Do you have something in mind? What if God showed up for you? Here's what happened for Elijah. A great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Perhaps Elijah wanted God to be present in the wind. We who live in the Midwest, we know the power of wind, don't we? Every summer, we have to run to our basements a few times and pray that nothing touches down. But we've seen in videos or maybe even firsthand what happens when a tornado does touch down. Wouldn't it be great if God would show up with tornadic force? No, hurricane force to break into pieces all the power of evil and come to our rescue. Then all those forces in our nation and in our world that are anti-Christ and against his church and anti-you would be broken to pieces. Perhaps Elijah wanted God to be present in the earthquake. I was in Irvine, California, which is in the LA area, at the end of May for a retreat. And I woke up one morning to the local news reporting that there had been a very minor earth earthquake in the early morning while I was sleeping. And I was actually pretty disappointed that I missed it. Now, not that feeling an earthquake is a goal of mine, but if I find out that one happened while I was there and I'm still alive, I would at least like to have known what it was like, but only a small one, right? Not, not the ground splitting apart, buildings crumbling kind of a quake. No, that would be terrifying. But wouldn't it be nice if God would show up and shake the foundations of every evil kingdom so that the house of Ahab and Jezebel and every modern day equivalent of people who are opposed to God would crumble. Perhaps Elijah wanted God to be present in the fire, even as God had just showed up in the fire to overthrow the prophets of Baal. We took a group of students up to Lutheran Valley Retreat in Colorado a few weeks ago, as you know. And I realize now this makes it sound like I travel an awful lot. California, Michigan, Colorado, but this last month has been a fluke. I really don't travel much. But we went up, went up to Colorado and one student who was there for the first time looked around and saw uh, all the trunks of trees that were blackened, fallen over and scattered like a spilled box of toothpicks. And he said, was there a fire here? Yes, 20 years ago. It was so devastating that all the evidence is still very much a part of the landscape. But so also are the new trees. Thousands and thousands of new trees that are growing because that's what happens after a forest fire. Wouldn't it be great if God showed up and burn down everything evil around you and cause new life and new growth so you could flourish. But God was not in the wind. God was not in the earthquake. God was not in the fire. So did God show up? 
After the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him. Why did Elijah come back out from the safety of the cave? And why did he cover his face as he went? It's because Elijah, when he heard the low voice, the quiet whisper, Elijah knew God was now present. And sinful Elijah covers his face in humility. The displays of power in wind and quake and fire remind Elijah that God can do all things. The low whisper reminds Elijah that God's word has all the power. And this is what God speaks, that Elijah is to go back. No more cowering in fear on the mountain. There's work to do. He's got to anoint a king for Syria. He's got to anoint a king for Israel. And then he's going to anoint a prophet. And the interesting thing about this word of the Lord is it's more than an instruction. It's a prophecy. A prophecy, you see, because Syria already has a king and he's a wicked king and he's at war with Israel. And Israel has a king too. And it's the wicked and weak need Ahab who's got a bossy life. And Israel has a prophet, it's Elijah. But God is saying here that Syria's king would be overthrown, and so would Ahab. And after Elijah has run his course, God is not going to leave Israel without a prophet. And those two new kings and the prophet Elisha will do the Lord's work according to his bidding. And so it will take time. But with the power of his word, he will breathe new life into his people day by day. As he also shakes every evil power and takes down every wicked ruler. And here's another beautiful thing about what God says to Elijah. Elijah isn't alone. God tells him about 7,000 in Israel whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and mouths that have not kissed him. 7,000. Now, 7,000 does not seem like many when you're talking about whole nations. I mean, that's not even a very large city by our standards. But if you think you are the only one left and now you can stand together with 7,000 other people, that's got to feel pretty good, right? Faithful, righteous people who have not given in to idolatry. And if you've been feeling powerless and God shows up to tell you that evil is about to be toppled, well, that's got to be encouraging. And so strengthened by the word of the Lord and trusting the promise, Elijah returns and does what he was called to do. God does show up for you, too, in a low whisper, in a humble word, as the word becomes flesh to dwell among us. He came not as a raging fire, not as a scattering wind, not as a violent quake, but in the small cry of a baby born in Bethlehem. As a young boy teaching the teachers the word of God in the temple. And then as a traveling rabbi, prophet, healer, proclaiming the kingdom of God, as we heard in our gospel reading, and calling sinners to become disciples, saying, follow me. That gentle word, that low whisper, tells of God's mercy, God's presence, in God's great power. And this low whisper becomes a loud roar on the cross, proclaiming, Father, forgive them. And it is finished. These are words of power that conquer sin and death and Satan for you. 
in that low whisper that says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That low whisper has brought you into the family of God, so you are never alone. Perhaps you've been too afraid and you need to repent of your cowardice. Maybe you've been too quick to go along with this wicked world instead of standing strong. Perhaps you've been hiding in a cave instead of facing the trouble and doing the work God has given you to do. Or perhaps you face a current challenge that has you complaining like Elijah. Lord, I'm all alone and I'm powerless. Well, let me ask you. If this word can forgive sin, and it does. And if it can conquer death, and it does. And if it can rebuke and chain up Satan, and it does. And if it brings you into the family of the king, and it does then why would you look for any other source of power? Remember that young man striving for perfection? He finds peace in the promise that God has steadfast and unfailing love, and it is precisely for imperfect people. The fragile mom finds comfort in God's daily promise that he will never leave her. And never forsake her. The shy girl finds confidence in a psalm that says God is her fortress. The sick man finds strength in the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus, in a renewed purpose as he spends his time answering Jesus' call to follow me. And the church. The church that is under attack now, as it always has been, finds its confidence and its hope in the promise that the very gates of hell will not overcome the church. We stand together, never alone. We cherish the word, the source of power in life. For there is more power in God's whispered word than any other power you've ever known. Indeed, the, the risen word incarnate still speaks to you. Are you listening? Amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We now honor and worship God with the giving of our offerings. Today we'll pray for Marilyn Turk, who was hospitalized on Thursday with an infection. For Dick Dammerman as he recovers from surgery. Uh, he has a long road to recovery ahead of him, but he's doing well. 
We'll pray for Tricia Eckhoff and Judy Olson as they continue to recover from surgery. We'll pray for Beth Spencer, uh, who has a, a, a health concern and is seeing a specialist this week. We'll pray for John Robles cousin, Tom, who is very ill. We'll also pray for the, the Dustman family and Olson family in their grief. And today we'll also pray for uh, the family of Edith Walters. Um, this is the aunt of Steve Walters and the mother of Steve's cousins, Becky and Nancy. Uh, we'll pray for them in their ongoing grief. Let us rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have created us in your image and called us into fellowship with your Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to know that you are always with us, guiding our steps, providing for our lives, hearing our prayers and answering in ways that are for our good and, the, and way, ways that also bring glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and receive our thanks for your presence in our lives. You reign over all the universe as King of kings and Lord of lords. In you, Lord Jesus, all things are held together. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant us hearts to receive your word, hands to extend your love to others, and feet to walk by your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer and receive our thanks for your creation in our lives. Holy Spirit, when we feel lost and alone, remind us of your never failing love. Instill in us the readiness to be led by you in the purpose that you give to all who follow Jesus Christ. Send your church out into every corner of the world to proclaim the good news of life and salvation in our Savior's death and resurrection. Until the day he comes again, grant that we never grow tired of sharing the gospel with our neighbors. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would also move us by your Holy Spirit to love our neighbors as you have directed, to help and serve in ways that are meaningful and helpful to them. Lord, following the Dobbs versus Jackson Supreme Court decision, strengthen your church, which views all human life to be sacred, to pay special attention to mothers in need, that these mothers and their babies would receive help and care and support from your people, that we would follow up our words with merciful action, that many would see and experience your love in us. Help all mothers and their families who are in any need and use us to serve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and receive our thanks for your purpose in our lives. Merciful Lord, we pray your blessing upon all who lead and govern us, for all who protect us from harm and danger, and for all who work for the well-being of our communities, our state, and our nation. Grant that your presence and provision be known in our families and in the lives of our children. Remind those who are homebound, hospitalized, or ailing in any way that they are never alone, for you are always with them. Grant your healing mercies to those we name before you, especially Marilyn in the hospital, those fighting cancer, Nicole, Judy, Angela, Darla, Mickey, Judy, Melinda, Adelaide, Vicki, Bill, Angie, Mike, Marsha, Mike, Donna, and Lana. For all those recovering from surgery, Dick, Tricia, Judy, James, Sharon, Rebecca, and Lewis. For all those with health concerns, Ed, Pam, Phil, Marsha, Sharon, Jean, Don, Rodney, and Darren, also Tom and Beth and all others that we name before you now in our hearts. We pray that you would be their help and their strength, O Lord, and that you would bring restoration to their bodies as they also rejoice in your healing word. 
We pray, Lord, that you would give peace that passes understanding to the Walters family, the Dustman family, the Olson family, and all others who grieve. That they would rejoice in your love and mercy, especially rejoice in Christ who has conquered death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your faithful hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all, for, and all those for whom we pray, ever trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We just prayed that God would strengthen us to, in word and deed, uh, live out these lives, these Christian lives he has given us to love our neighbors. Let's sing a hymn that sings just that, hymn 853. You may be seated.